Antonio is one of tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of children who are in this exact situation, who have come across the border alone, without their parents, and been released to a person who, instead of taking care of them, has put them to work. Antonio did not sneak into this country unnoticed. He's not here undocumented in the shadows. He came through a shelter run by Health and Human Services and was released to somebody who said that he would be a sponsor. And instead of protecting Antonio, that man turned around and said, okay, you're 14, but now you have to pay rent. You also have to pay me thousands of dollars in debt. Go get a job. And so Antonio has been working full time since he came here a year and a half ago. Hannah, a day after your report went up, some Biden officials were grilled over migrant child labor. Here, here's a bit of that congressional hearing with the top official responsible for placing children in safe homes. Take a listen. Could the 85,000 number be right that the New York Times says? We don't know where 85,000 unaccompanied minors wound up. We uh, do not track or monitor. The answer is no. There are 85,000 kids who came across the border. We don't know. Is that right? Apparently it is. HHS is not getting a pass. HHS is here. I'm worried about who isn't on this panel and who has signed more than 100 minors, many of whom were migrant children, to work overnight shifts in hazardous conditions at meatpacking plants across eight states. Your agency or big corporations? Big corporations. Hannah, what does HHS need to do to fix this? And to the point you heard there from Representative Porter, who else needs to be held accountable? What we're really looking at is a system failure, and it's multiple right. systems. So these kids are being put to work, and they're at the intersection of labor enforcement and immigration enforcement. And the Biden administration, to its credit, after our story came out a month and a half ago, immediately made some changes and said that it would go after corporations and really look at the employers that are hiring these children and putting them to work in jobs where a child should never be you know, a meatpacking plant. And the other side of that equation is what is happening with health and human services, with the child welfare part of this equation. And right now, there's almost no support for the majority of these children. They're released to sponsors, and that's basically the last time the government checks in on them. And so there's a lot of pressure to ramp up services like legal services, social workers to send some adults out to check on these kids after they're released and living in most cases with people who are not their parents. Hannah, I've got a minute left, but I want to ask you this week, Iowa's mostly Republican Senate, they advanced a bill to actually loosen child labor laws. I mean, how do laws like that complicate then what we're talking about? I mean, it's shocking. You would think that in 2023, we would not have a child labor issue in this country. And what we're seeing is a real worker shortage. And the response has been in places like Iowa, Arkansas, their efforts underway in other places like Ohio to make it so that children can just do these jobs. You know, why not put a child in a meatpacking plant? Why not let a child work overnight? And it's really goes back to the same issue. Workers don't want to take these jobs and corporations are looking to children. 